Welcome back. I'm at Wells Orchards in beautiful Michigan, and it is apple picking season. This right here is a modern apple system. For those of you who think of an apple as just a tree that's standing by itself or an orchard where it's widely spaced, this is how modern apple culture is taking place. And this is not something that we really see down in Florida or Alabama where I'm from, but it is an option for your backyard, particularly in a grocery row, if you wanted to get stuff tight. I interviewed Scott Wells, the owner, and these are only 12 feet apart in the rows and two and a half foot right here. And this is a columnar system. So they want these to be like columns. They are on a dwarfing root stock, which helps keep them small. It also helps them to fruit quickly. And he said that within one to three years, they are already fruiting and producing fruit. And when you look at that compared to a traditional standard apple tree, you almost never see a standard apple tree anymore, 30, 40 feet tall. Because something like this produces extremely rapidly. And one of those trees might take eight to 10 years to really get kicking. He told me that his grandfather planted apple trees on a 40 by 40 grid. Every 40 foot, there was an apple. And the trees got gigantic. There are old, ladders where they used to go way up and it was actually dangerous. These guys had to climb up these tall ladders and there'd be people on the ground and they would catch the apples, they'd throw the apples down and just bushels and bushels of apples were coming out of these gigantic trees. But to maintain a tree like that, to watch out for apple scab and other issues, it's difficult when the tree is so huge. So now for maximum sunlight and production and easy access, easy picking, perfect, beautiful fruit, they're put much closer into hedges like this. And then the roots have some space to run underneath. Now the downside of this is these trees can no longer support themselves like a standard apple tree could. If you notice, each one of these trees is tied to a post and the posts are on wires that are under tension that gives them the strength to stand up because the dwarfing root stalks are weak. If you just planted a dwarf tree in your yard and you didn't put a stake on it, if you get any kind of a high wind event or a lot of rain or something like that, shoop, there goes that tree. It's right over. It doesn't have that massive root system with the massive top. You have a weak root system. And they don't necessarily have the same lifespan as a standard tree either. You know, it's not going to be 100 years of life necessarily. And he does have to come in here and make sure that these are pruned and kept to the right shape. And they are deliberately pruned to stay tight. And he says this is easier with spur bearing types as compared to tip bearing types. Tip bearers bear on the ends and they want to sprawl out and then just put the fruit on the ends. Whereas spur bearers have these little spurs where the apples come off of the spurs and they're little side branches on the branches. And he says, so you gotta be careful not to cut all the spurs off when you're pruning. But with tip bearers, you can't just go ahead and cut the tip off. Now I'm no expert on apples, but I had a great conversation and this is always something I've wanted to do, go and see a serious commercial apple orchard and kind of get an experience of some agriculture that is outside of our Alabama norms. Now this area of Michigan is ideally suited to apple production. This is actually called the Fruit Ridge area. The elevation is a little higher, which helps with the frost events. Also the elevation, the frost rolls away from these trees, but being a little higher, it's a little more moderate. They're also near enough to Lake Michigan that they get some of that thermal mass taking off the worst of the cold. So the owner told me that at certain times of the year when everybody else around them a little further out gets nailed by frosts in the Fruit Ridge area here, they still get good yields. I'm standing in an apple orchard that was planted almost a hundred years ago. This was planted in the 1930s and they don't plant apples like this anymore. This tree here, if you gauge me at six foot, this is about five Davids tall, which means this is about a 30 foot tree. And the spacing to the next tree is quite wide. So let's count it. 
Let's count it without falling over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's maybe 11 or 12. There's a lot of thorns in here. It's about, let's say 36, 35 feet. A pretty standard spacing would have been 40 feet. And a tree this size, there are apples up there. There are no apples. There's a few over here from this side shoot that we could actually reach, but there are very few apples that are actually human scale reachable. You have to go way up there. So having very long ladders was just part of what people had to have to have an orchard. And I've written in the past on mangoes and mangoes getting to 50 or 60 feet tall. A lot of old African mango orchards had gigantic trees that were spaced widely and they cover a huge area. But in recent times, they've moved to having trees that are about eight foot tall so they, they can be cared for and tended. And you could fit maybe 15 trees or 20 trees in the same space that you used to have one giant mango tree in. The same thing has happened with apples as the dwarfing rootstock and the training has come in, faster production, closer, easier for humans to pick, this sort of a system has gone away. But in your backyard, there's no reason why you can't just plant a standard apple tree and have a shade tree that also produces bushels and bushels and bushels of fruit. If you have a tiny little backyard, you probably want to put a couple of dwarf trees in there and stake them up because those dwarf trees have weak roots. This thing has really strong roots. It's almost 100 years old. It's still producing apples, and if it had been cared for a little better, it would be producing better than it is now. But it, there's not a right or wrong in growing apples. It's just for commercial production, it makes a lot more sense to keep it tight, keep it under control so they could spray it and harvest it and get the most perfect apples possible. But a tree like this in your backyard is really kind of awesome. If you could build a tree fort in your apple tree, that's just living the dream right there. So it's kind of cool to go back in time and see how it used to be done and see how it's done today. And I'm, I'm very privileged to get a chance to visit a few farms today and look at how different people are growing apples and how it's been grown in the past. Where we are, we are going to be experimenting with a variety of apple called Shell, which originally was developed in Bruton, Alabama. It's very suited to our climate, our chill hours. It uh, shrugs off pests and diseases and produces great fruit in the summer. And my friend Randall over at Flomaton Famous has been growing those trees and he's grafting them onto dwarf rootstocks for us. So we're gonna do a grocery row where I'm taking out the section of the grocery row garden that is growing Jerusalem artichokes and replacing it with shell apples. So we're actually going to have a hedge, something like this in our garden. So if you wanna do something like this in your backyard, make sure that you match up the rootstock to what you wanna do. Do you wanna not worry about it at all? You don't want, not wanna to have to stake it up? Go for a semi-dwarf or a full size. If you want to, you know, get high production quickly and put a little more care into it, like the commercial orchards are doing now, go for your fully dwarf and just know that you're gonna to have to take care of it. And it's probably gonna need some irrigation too because those roots are not super vigorous. Thanks for joining me. I hope it kind of give you a quick overview of how these apples are grown as compared to the old standard system with huge trees and ladders and men climbing way up there in the fall. This is what it looks like now capturing all the sunlight, getting very fast production, and putting trees two and a half feet apart. Very cool to see. Thanks for joining me. I'll catch you next time. And until then, may your thumbs always be green.